Welcome to Summit TV and happy Grads Day to our 2020 graduates. Today's service was designed with you in mind. We believe that God is with you, He loves you, and He wants to encourage you today. Make sure to share this video and visit our YouTube channel at Summit Church DC to subscribe to all of our weekly content. TV and thanks for watching. It's going to be a powerful day and we can't wait to connect with you. We've got a dedicated response team who's going to be interacting with you live during the service. So don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Now, as always, we're going to begin with worship and we would love for you to join us and actually engage so you can set the atmosphere of worship right where you are. We know it might seem different, but it can feel the same. So here we go.
are so thankful for your goodness. And we lift you up today as we worship.
you'd like prayer at this time, you can text the number at the bottom of your screen. Our prayer team is ready to pray with you as we continue to worship. We get to watch a water baptism experience today. 
And I just want to let you know that we are going to continue to offer water baptisms in our upcoming Sunday services. So if you'd like to be water baptized, just click on the baptism link right there online. Now we have Jamon here. Now, Jamon, have you made a decision to be a Christ follower? I have. Now, why don't you share with everybody what brought you to this decision? Well, over two decades ago, uh, I made a decision to follow Christ at a small church in Shreveport, Louisiana. Uh, in that time, I've never been water baptized. Um, with everything that's, that's been going on in the world, you know, I've decided that, you know, I've run out of excuses. Um, the time is now. Um, so I'm, I'm here tonight to publicly affirm my uh, devotion to Jesus Christ. All right, let's do it. Jamon, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, and in the name of Jesus. joining us today. My name is Melissa. This broadcast and all we do for our community and the world would not be possible without your giving. While we're not meeting in person, your online giving is appreciated now more than ever. When you give, you empower Summit to impact our community, our nation, and the world. So thank you. There are multiple ways for you to give. You can give online by clicking the link in the description box or via text using the information found on your screen. Just text the amount you'd like to give and the keyword summit to the number 45777. If Summit Church is your home, we're asking you to continue to give just like when we gather together. Whether it's online, text, or check in the mail, let's do this right now together. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for every person with a heart to give. We thank you for your faithfulness in our lives, and we want to be faithful with what you've given us. We know that out of our giving, we make a difference in our community and our world. Thank you for using our resources to impact others with the love of God. That's why today I can give cheerfully, because I'm making a difference, and you promised the giver you would always supply our every need. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, in just a few minutes, pastor's going to come out and share part three of his message series, The Holy Spirit. You know, so far this year has been one for the record books. And the graduating class of 2020 will never forget the impact the changes have had on their graduation ceremonies. So Summit wanted to give our 2020 grads something to remember and give you the opportunity to celebrate their achievements. So Summit, put your hands together and give a shout out in the comments for the graduating class of 2020.
Hello, 2020 graduates. Stephanie and I are so proud of everything that you've accomplished. What an incredible video we just watched. We got to see every one of your faces. We know that this has been a different year to graduate. It's a year you'll never forget. But this is the way I see it. The word graduation means to receive a diploma or to go to a ceremony or have a celebration. But it also means to go from one degree or one level to another. We know that you are reaching another level in your life. And so Stephanie and I and the entire staff and the entire church here at Summit want to congratulate you. Thank you for letting us be a part of your 2020 graduation. And we know that God is for you and he's not against you. That means the best is yet to come. Congratulations, 2020 graduates. We love you so much. Hey Summit, my name is Gabe and I serve on the production team. We love meeting our first time guests here at Summit. So if you've never joined us in person, but you're here with us for the first time online, welcome. Text the phrase Summit Connect to 9400 or click the connection card link in the description box and take a moment to fill that out. Our team is live online right now and ready to offer you more information about Summit Church. If you wanna get connected to Summit, starting point is your first step. Starting Point is our four-step system that introduces you to what Summit believes in and allows you to join Dream Team, where you can be a part of what's happening here. The four steps can be completed in any order and are offered virtually using Zoom. Register for today's step by emailing melissa at summitchurchdc.com. Summit small groups are the perfect way to find friends and grow in Christ. Groups are meeting across the DMV virtually using social media, Zoom, and Google Hangouts. Browse and register for your favorite group online at summitchurchdc.com. Parents, we have fun, life-giving content for the whole family each week. Kids Life TV is available today after each service on YouTube and Facebook. For our teens, SY Live meets tonight on Instagram at 6 p.m. All middle and high school students are invited for a fun time. This Wednesday night, we're gathering on Summit TV for Prayer Encounter. Spend some quality time worshiping God and praying together this week. Our team will be ready to receive your prayer requests and pray for them in real time. Next weekend is a very special one. We're celebrating Dad's Day next Sunday with our Summit community. You won't want to miss this very special day. Invite a new family to watch Summit TV during one of our three life-giving services. We want to send a huge shout out to our serve team who has been all about others. When the team learned of a need for face masks at Fort Belvoir Community Hospital, they jumped right in. The team created 300 custom masks and they were delivered last week to hospital employees and servicemen and women. If you want to serve during projects like these, text Summit Serves to 94000. Our mission is to create a life-giving community of changed lives through the love of God and faith in Jesus Christ. The Summit team is committed to helping you know God, find freedom, discover your purpose, and make a difference. Our team is ready to help you in your next step in Christ. Let us know how we can help you in your relationship with God by messaging us or shooting us an email at info at summitchurchdc.com. Well, happy Sunday, everybody, and welcome back to Summit TV. No matter where you are, I want to personally thank you for tuning in with us today. And if this is your first time Summit experience, I want to welcome you and thank you for spending part of your Sunday with us. My name is Eddie Trayers, and I am the lead pastor here, and I want you to know that on behalf of my staff who are here every day and operating the church as the church, and of course the Summit Dream Team who are here right now making this broadcast possible, we have been committed for the last 13 weeks to staying connected with you. And you know what? Now it's your turn. Just like we want every week, we want you to stay connected with us. So whatever platform you're using today, take some time during the broadcast to interact with us. Use the comment box, message us, and tell us about your viewing experience. We have absolutely loved the pictures that you've been sending in. We have loved the comments. It has made all the difference during this service that we are able to interact with people. We're not able to interact with people live in the auditorium, but we are able to do it virtually, and we love engaging with you. 
So make sure that you engage with the team that's standing by live during the service to interact with you. And you know what? We want to make sure we keep our good habits that we have formed over the years here at Summit. One of those habits is, is that we're all about others. Everything we do in this church is always about someone else because that's what Jesus taught us to do was to go out and be about others. The other thing is, is that we want to continue to be an inviter. That's how we grow the church. We grow our influence by changing our community. So we want you to hit the share button because that's how we're being an inviter today. Tag your friends, start a watch party, and invite people to join in. Your friend, your neighbor, your coworker, somebody in the marketplace, an acquaintance, because they also have friends. They can tag them. And the next thing you know, we have a virtual watch party that's much more expansive than what we're able to do just by inviting people to the church. Thank God that we're able to continue to grow the church because you are an inviter. And now I have a big announcement. We've gone from phase one into phase two here in Northern Virginia. So what is the difference between phase one and phase two? Well, there really is no different when it comes to places of worship. The same restrictions that are in place for phase one are the same restrictions that are in place for phase two. But we are going to open the doors of Summit for you to be able to attend in-person gatherings on June 28th. That's the last Sunday of the month. And there are restrictions that tell me that it's not going to be the way that I want it to be. Can I say this to you? That on the inside of me, and I'm sure on the inside of a lot of you, that the need to gather is bigger than the restrictions that are keeping us from coming in the door. So there will be more information given on the website, via social media, and we'll be sending out some small little videos to let you know exactly how we're going to do this reopening. But we are really excited that we finally have a day that we can say the auditorium doors will be open and you will be welcome to come and sit in this auditorium. I can't tell you how excited I am to be able to speak to people and not just cameras. So remember, June 28th, there'll be more information coming. Well, today we begin our third week in our message series titled, The Holy Spirit. And I have loved being able to share this message with you. You know, so far we've discussed the moment that Jesus predicted that would change the disciples' lives into different people called the day of Pentecost. This was the day that 120 believers were all together and they were set on fire by the Holy Spirit. And the New Testament church was born on this day, the day of Pentecost. It was the day that the closest followers of Jesus changed from just being followers into witnesses of God's love and were empowered to teach about the new life that is found in Christ. We also talked about the Trinity made up of these three components, of these three individuals, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We said the work of the Father through Jesus is to bring humanity back to the Father by the cross through the forgiveness of sins. That the work of Jesus through the Holy Spirit is to educate Christ followers to live free by the resurrection through the new life. Then the work of the Holy Spirit, the third part of the Godhead, his work is through the Christ follower. And it's to empower us to be a witness to tell others of the original work of the Father, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. And it's through the love of God that we see this work take place. So number one, God sent Jesus to all humanity. It was a covering of the earth. Number two, Jesus sent the Holy Spirit to us, the believer, the ones who have believed in Christ. And then number three, the Holy Spirit sent us to others. So here we see that God sent Jesus, Jesus sent the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit is sending us to others. 
Now the force is with you. We talked about that last week with Luke Skywalker and the Master Jedis and, and teaching him about the force, the positive side of the force, and, and not to slip over to the dark side. Well, we use that as an example of the Holy Spirit being with us. The force is with you. And when Satan sees you full of the Holy Spirit, we want him to say this. The force is what? The force is strong with this one. So how will people know that the force of the Holy Spirit is strong and active in our lives? One word, change. It's through change that people are going to be able to say, what happened to you? And so we've used this as our core scripture over in Galatians chapter 5 and verse 22. It says, the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. This kind of fruit changes us. Look at the fruit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control, my favorite one. And there is no law against these things. I want you to think about that. There's no law. I want to highlight that. There is no law that says these things are wrong. I'm going to go back. Let's look back at that scripture. What is it wrong? Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Moving forward here. There is no law that says these things are wrong. You can have as much of those things as possible. Last week, we, we, we covered the fact that in the uh, recent events in the news and, and, and things that have come to light and the hurt and the pain and, and racism that has come to light in a way probably it has not been highlighted ever. All I can believe is that God is doing something in our nation that is positive. But whenever God is at work, we see the negative forces come in as well. There's no law against loving people. There's no law against being kind and gentle. There's no law against peace. There's no law against these things that God said, the nine fruit of the Spirit. As a matter of fact, I've got a little um, illustration I want to show you over here on the table. So just, you know, hand cleanser has become very important. So before I get to this food, let me say to you one thing. The Word of God has uh, sanctified me. But now I am sanitized, so I don't freak anybody out. You know what I have here? I have a bowl of salad. Now, this is my favorite. I love romaine salad. I don't like anything else. I always order romaine. And so I'm going to add some tomatoes onto this salad. Nice red tomatoes. My wife always loves tomatoes. As a matter of fact, she calls them maters. Okay? And then some peppers. We got some red and orange and yellow peppers in this salad. And then how about some cucumbers? Man, this is looking good. I might eat this later. Not just a prop, people. This is my lunch. So here we have all of these things mixed together. And of course, a little cheddar cheese. I know some of you like goat cheese. Some of you like feta cheese. I'm not into those strange tasting cheeses. I like cheddar cheese. Now look at this salad. This salad is like the fruit of the Spirit. There's no law against the salad. I can go to the salad bar as... Look at that salad. Look at that thing. I can go to the salad bar as many times as I would like to go. There's no law against this. This is not going to hurt me. I can have as much of this salad as I want. I can go back as many times as I want and eat this salad. But there is a law against this plate right here. Now, I want you to look at this plate and compare the calories between this plate. Compare the carbohydrates, you know, if you're, if you're on a keto diet. And, and on here we have fried chicken. We have macaroni and cheese with lobster in it, lo lobster macaroni and cheese. We have potato salad with all of the ingredients. And then we have biscuits. And of course, on biscuits, what do we do? We put butter and honey on those biscuits. We dab them and slab them. And then we put barbecue sauce and honey mustard and ranch on our, on our uh, fried chicken. Now, look at the difference between these plates. Which of them do you think is the fruit of the Spirit? And which one do you think is the works of the flesh? Which one do you think there's no law against? And which one has a big law connected to it? No law, I can have as much of this as I want. 
if I eat as much of this as I want. Now, I know some of you are looking at this like this is what I eat every day and more power to you. I'm not here to change anybody's diet. I'm trying to show you the difference in the spiritual aspect of what we can do the most of and what we have to limit in our lives. So what have we said? There's no law that says these things are wrong. Let's remind ourselves about what things we're going to go back What things are we talking about? Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. These are the things that there's no law against. We can give as much of that as we want. And we have seen that all of the things that have gone on in current events and on the news, that when we see love and we see kindness and we see gentleness, that it diffuses the flesh. But when all of these other things come up, the flesh rises up and combat and war begins between humanity. So what's happened to us? What has the work of the Holy Spirit begun in our lives? You see, the work of the Spirit causes our spirit, the the core of who we are, to dominate where the mind wants to dominate. This is accomplished by taking the same path that Jesus did. Let's go forward two scriptures here. The cross. This is the path that Jesus took. We have to take the same path. What Jesus did for us physically and spiritually, we only have to do spiritually. We don't have to follow the physical getting on the cross. We come to the cross and give our lives at the feet of Jesus. And then he spiritually accomplishes in our lives what we cannot do for ourselves. Let's look over here in the next part of Galatians. It says, Galatians chapter 5, those who belong to Christ, I've given myself, I've gone through the cross, nailed the passions and desires of their sinful nature to his cross. This is our path to the work of the Holy Spirit, and crucified them there. Since we decided to live by the Spirit, let us follow the Spirit's leading in every part of our lives. You know, one part of the Holy Spirit's work in our lives is called behavior modification. We showed you this last week, behavior modification. What does that mean? It means we've given up It's all about me. That attitude of selfishness that comes from this type of attitude. We have slayed the evil desires of our past ambitions and opened up our hearts to God's perspective towards life and others. See, we become selfless instead of selfish. We become pure in our motives. So my first point today is this. You can't fake it. You can't fake it. You've heard that saying that says, you know, fake it till you make it. That works to a point, but there has to be a turning point. There has to be a place where uh, change actually takes place. You begin by stepping out at one point and going as far as you can go, and you may not understand fully what you're doing, but you fake it kind of till you make it, but there's got to be a real moment. There's got to be an actual point where change takes place and where we become the real deal. Because if we're not, we're we're nothing but a fraud. And a fraud is not fooling anybody but themselves. So there has to be a season in our newfound faith where it can feel like we're faking it. Because we're just now learning. You know, it's really not faking it. It's following the practices, and the teachings of Jesus Christ. So it's not faking, it's following. So let me encourage you to do this. Fake it until you become it. Rather than fake it till you make it, why don't you fake it or follow and practice until you become what the Word of God says you are. We do that through practice. That is the work of the Father through the Son, through the Holy Spirit, in you, to me, and then we pass it on to others. So let's look over here at my whiteboard real quick. So we have the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Bible says these three are one. And that the work of the Father through the Son 
and then the work of the Son through the Holy Spirit that originated with the Father, but that work goes to us. And this is how it works. The Father to the Son, the Holy Spirit to us, and then us to the world. This is God's plan on how to win the world. When we're changed by the love of God, when we're changed by the fruit of the Spirit, when we act out of like the salad versus the plate full of carbohydrates and and all sorts of fats and things that aren't good for you, when we act out of the fruit of the Spirit in the midst of chaos, we become a shining light. Let's look over here in James chapter 1. It says, let's get rid of everything we know is wrong in our lives. I don't have to judge that. When you read the Bible, you will find out the things that God wants you to change. You know what's wrong. And be glad for the wonderful message of God's word we have received. Remember, it is a message to obey, not just to listen to. Just like when we tell our kids, clean your room. We want them to actually go and do what we say. So don't fool yourselves letting the word, that's the Bible, the scriptures, this message, go in one ear and out the other. Act on what you hear. Some of the best really advice you can use is to do it. Just do it. Like Nike says, just do what God says. It's kind of like the little boy who helped his mom plant some tomato plants. You know, I'm doing the same thing in my yard. I'm, I'm a little late. I have kind of a patio garden that I do every year. I'm late this year because of all that's going on. I'm hoping that it will take root and things will work out. Well, he became very impatient because he was waiting for that fruit to appear. And he would go out and look every day for those red tomatoes so that he could taste one of them. You know, weeks of looking had passed. And all of a sudden, to his amazement, he ran outside and he saw this big, bright red tomato on the vine. He ran over excitement to pick it and to eat it, but he found that his mother had tied some store-bought tomatoes on the vine, and he was really disappointed. Sounds like something a mom would do. And I say this to you, you cannot fake the fruit of the Spirit. What do I mean by that? You can't tie fruit that Jesus wants us to have through the Holy Spirit on an unchanged life. A life must be surrendered first, and then the process of growth begins. And like that little boy, we cannot get impatient. Let me say this to you. It all begins with some tiny tweaks in our life, and tiny tweaks can lead to big changes. In 1780, way back in the 1700s. An Anglo-Irish statesman, Edmund Burke, he wrote this. He said this very clearly. And he was saying this to people who needed their lives to take root into the fruit of the Spirit. Here's the quote. Men are qualified for civil liberty in exact proportion through their disposition to put moral chains on their own appetites. Well, that's, that's a lot said there. As we talk about appetites, we could look over here. As we come over here and we look again, uh, I need to put a chain on my appetite. Which one do I need the most of? Which one is going to benefit me the most? Men are qualified for civil liberty in exact proportion to their disposition to put moral chains on their own appetites. Society cannot exist unless a controlling power upon will and appetite be placed somewhere. Boy, does that real This was written in the 1790s. And this applies to exactly what we're facing today. And... The less of it there is within us, where the fruit of the Spirit should be, the more there is without. The more we're uncontrolled on the inside, the more we'll be uncontrolled on the outside. It is ordained in the eternal constitution of things. This is the Word of God that men of intemperate minds cannot be free. Their passions forge their fetters. Let's move forward. Let's get hold of this message. I want to say this to you. I never intended on speaking on this topic at this time. 
When I began to speak on the Holy Spirit, I had a whole different direction I was going to go, but I saw the mind and the wisdom of God to be able to tie this message into today's current events. So number one, you can't fake it. Number two, there are no shortcuts. No shortcuts. And let me say this to you. I hate this point. I don't even like to talk about the fact that there are no shortcuts. Everybody loves shortcuts. Why? Because maturity takes time. There are no shortcuts to get to maturity. It also takes challenges to get to maturity. We will never mature without challenges in our lives. As a matter of fact, I heard about these three college buddies who went on a hike, and it had rained pretty heavily the day before, and when they reached the river where they usually was easy for them to cross, it was very high and running very swiftly. They needed to get to the other side, and they knew that it was too dangerous, so the first man thought about it, and he prayed to God saying, please God, give me the strength to cross this river, and poof. God gave him big arms and strong legs, and he was able to swim across that swift river in about two hours after almost drowning a couple times. The second guy watched what happened. He prayed this way. He said, please, God, give me the strength and the tools to cross this river. And poof, God gave him the strong arms, God gave him the strong legs, but he also gave him a rowboat. Then he was able to row across that river in about an hour after tipping over or capsizing multiple times. The third guy watched the first two, and he thought about it for a minute. And he prayed saying this, dear God, give me the strength Give me the tools and the intelligence to cross the river. And poof, God turned him into a woman. Look what happened. She pulled out her map, hiked upstream a couple of hundred yards, and then walked across a bridge. Come on, ladies. You know that's funny. Those men wanted to power their way across, but God gave some intelligence. You know what? God wants us to think about the way we're acting. God wants us to use our brain and our spirit. He wants to come in by the Holy Spirit. Look over here in James chapter 1. It says, consider it a sheer gift, friends, when tests and challenges come at you from all sides. There are no shortcuts. And God's saying, don't try to get past it. You know that under pressure, your faith life is forced into the open and shows its true colors. This is so true. So don't try to get out of anything prematurely. That's a real thought. Let it do its work so you become mature and well-developed, not deficient in any way. God doesn't want us to take a shortcut. God wants us to go through some of the things that we need to go through. And I want to stop here and tell you this, that God is a good God. He doesn't send sickness. He doesn't send disease. He doesn't cause problems in your life. But when problems arise, he comes in with the strength to face the problem, and he'll help you get through the issue. There are some challenges that come into our lives that might be through relationship. It might even come through the job. It might come through school. But those are the types of things that are in our way that God wants us to learn through the fruit of the Spirit to work through. Those other ones are really from the enemy attacking us, but God is there for us and helps us in both situations. John C. Maxwell said this, the greatest day in our life and mine is when we take the total responsibility for our attitudes. That's the day we truly grow up. Everybody loves John Maxwell. And he's very clear on the fact the day we grow up is when we take responsibility for ourselves. Our maturity depends on the nine qualities or the nine fruit of the Spirit to be obvious in our actions and our speech towards others. And there is no shortcut. As a matter of fact, it's a lifelong journey developing, let's look at them again, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. When we start on this journey for the rest of our lives, we will be developing the strength to walk out these fruit. 
This scripture over in Philippians chapter 1, 6, I thought would really fit in this message. Paul said this, I'm convinced of this very thing, that he who began, see it's a journey, who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Jesus Christ. He that began will finish. He started a good work in you, so he plans on finishing a good work in you. So let's be part of the process. Let's get involved with what it is God says we need to involve in our lives so that we can be a blessing to the world. So our first point, you can't fake it. Our second point, there are no shortcuts. And our third point, we do life differently. The we is the Christ follower. We do life differently than everyone else. Over in Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 24, it says this, let us think of ways to motivate one another to acts of love and good works. You see, we do life this way. We are thinking of ways to motivate one another to acts of love. We're we're motivating one another. Uh, Another word for that word motivate is the word provoke. Now, when you provoke me, normally we're saying that I've been provoked in a negative way. But the Bible says we are to provoke one another to acts of love, that we're supposed to prod each other to walk in love. I can't think of a better time that this scripture needs to be applied to the church. We need to be the answer in the midst of the mess. Let's provoke one another, red, yellow, black, white, brown, differences in languages, differences in culture. That doesn't matter. Those differences make us who we are as the world that God put us here. What are we supposed to do? Be provoking one another, not to anger but to be provoking one another to things that acts of love and good works. I have a question for you. Are we letting culture determine how we engage each other? Culture is not supposed to determine how we're supposed to engage each other. The scriptures are supposed to determine how we gauge each other. We need to be very clear that the way we do life is different than the way the rest of the world does life. We're motivated how? By Scripture. We're motivated by the Holy Spirit. This is how we live our lives. We're motivated by these things, not the way the world is motivated by social things. We're motivated by scriptural things. Over in Romans chapter 5 and verse 5, it says this, the love of God has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. You notice every time we see the Holy Spirit connected with something that's an element of God, it's one of the nine fruit of the Spirit. The love of God's been poured into our hearts by the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. You see, when we receive God, we receive the Holy Spirit, and we get saved, and we take that next step to allow the Holy Spirit to become a permanent part of our very fiber of who we are. The love of God begins to be poured into us so that the love of God can be poured out to others. Look at this in another translation. It says it this way out of the message translation. We can't round up enough containers to hold everything God generously pours into our lives through the Holy Spirit. God's just pouring stuff into us. How's he doing it? I want to go back over to the whiteboard. The Father to the Son. The Son to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit to us and us to the world. You know, we want this box to get bigger. Bigger, 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 bigger. Why? Because others are coming into the kingdom. Others are finding out what the fruit of the Spirit means. And now it's not just us and it's others and they have influence on others. Can I say this to you? There's no life like the Spirit-filled life. There's no life like it. There's no life like living by and through the Spirit of God because it's bigger than us and it's greater than us. The love of God's been poured in us. Now we get to pour it out on other people. Love is the answer for what we're looking for right now. So now let's discuss a few things that we've covered over the last week and tie today's message with last week's message. We said this over in Acts chapter 2 
in verse 1 through 4, it says, When the day of Pentecost was being celebrated, 120 of Jesus' disciples were gathered together in one place, and suddenly, without warning, there was a sound like a strong wind. No one could tell where it came from. It filled the whole building. Then, like a wildfire, the Holy Spirit spread throughout the crowd, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and started speaking and a number of unlearned languages as the Spirit prompted them to speak. This is the day of Pentecost. This is the day the church was born. This is the day we've already said that the disciples went from just being followers to becoming witnesses and becoming teachers. Then we looked over in 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 3. It says, through Christ, we were giving amazing promises. The Holy Spirit was one of those promises. And with these, we complement our basic believing faith. So we have our basic believing faith, and then we have promises. And those promises complement our faith by adding to our faith. And there are other ones, but the one we looked at is spiritual understanding. The Holy Spirit comes into our life, and now we understand things that we couldn't understand without Him. Let's look here at this little definition. Spiritual understanding enables us to see truths that we were once blind to. We couldn't see. You know that song, Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me? I once was blind, but now I can see because of the amazing grace the Holy Spirit is in my life. Let's look over here in Galatians chapter 5 and verse 17. This is Paul speaking. He's talking still about the fruit of the Spirit. and He says this, live freely, animated and motivated by God's Spirit. Then you won't feed the compulsions of selfishness. Over here, we have two different plates. We have the the compulsions of selfishness over there with our fried chicken plate and all of those calories. And then we have the fruit plate that actually feeds good things. Selfishness is at odds with the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is incompatible with selfishness. These two ways of life are antithetical. You cannot live one way and at other times another way. Acting according to how you feel on any given day. This is so true. We can't live where we just act out of just how we feel no matter what. Choose now to be led by the Spirit. I choose right now not to be led by the news. I choose right now not to be led by a movement. I choose right now not to be led by people. You know what I choose? I choose the fruit of the Spirit. I choose to love. I choose to be kind. I choose to be gentle. I choose to have peace. I choose to have long-suffering. I choose to have self-control. Those are my choices because that is how I'm going to love people that I don't even know how to love. I want to show you a scripture over in Acts chapter 10. This is talking about Jesus being filled with the Holy Spirit, that God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. What happened when he received the Holy Spirit? What happened when he received power? He went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. You know, I read this little story, and it was about this boy who had attended Sunday school class in the middle of Chicago, and he loved going to his Sunday school class. And then his parents decided, because of jobs and other things, that they were going to move to a different part of the city. And the little boy missed Sunday school so much that he walked an hour each way just to attend his Sunday school class. He had a little girlfriend that asked him this question. Why are you walking so far to go to church? She said, there's plenty of other good churches right here near your home. And the little boy replied, they may be good for other people, but not for me. She said, why not? And this was his answer. Because they love a fellow over there. It's amazing what love will do. It'll motivate people to walk an hour 
not because they love the Sunday school class or because the way the church is designed or the doors when they're open. It's because the people that are inside the church love a fellow over there. They love a lady in that place. We want this church, this place, we're, we're coming back on June 28th. We'll be giving you more information. But we want these seats to be filled, but we want your friend, your neighbor, your coworker to eventually be able to come into this place when we get going full steam ahead. We want them to find the love of God in this place. We want people to say, you know, they, they love a person over there. But then we want this to spill out onto the streets. We don't just want it to be contained in four walls. When we make it our personal goal to help others see the love of God, which has been poured into our hearts by the Holy Spirit, people will be running for more of what we have. The fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against these, there is no law. So let's run through our three points today. Number one, you can't fake it. Get that life changed and let God begin the growth process and the fruit will begin to come forth. Number two, there are no shortcuts. I still hate this point. We're going to have to mature and it takes time. It takes journey. It takes challenges. It takes attitude adjustments. It takes dealing with people. There are no shortcuts. And number three, we do life differently. As believers, we do life differently. I want to invite you to do life differently. Maybe you're watching today and you have never found real life. You only know your life. But you know what? God loves you right where you are, just like you are. It doesn't matter where you've been doesn't matter what you've done. doesn't matter how many times you've done it or who you did it with. God has a plan for your life. He wants so badly to be able to introduce himself to you. But sometimes the brokenness on the inside of us rejects his love. You ever gone to hug somebody or talk to somebody and they stiffen right up because they've been hurt? They're broken. And you want to so... Help them to be able to receive love. God wants to do that for you right now. The Bible says that if you'll believe in your heart and you'll confess with your mouth, because with the heart you believe and with the mouth you confess, that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and that He is the Savior of the world and that you ask Him to forgive you of your sins, the Bible said you'll be saved like that, that moment. So I want to give you that opportunity right now to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. doesn't matter how you feel. What matters is what you want right now. It's a desire. It's a want to. It's a decision. He'll take you right where you are, and he'll change your path. Just like that little boy, you'll find out that he loves a fella. He loves a lady. If you'll give him the opportunity through admitting your need for change in your life. This is your moment. Would you pray with me? Let me lead you in a prayer right now. Follow me in this prayer. Say, Heavenly Father, I realize I have a need for a Savior. I believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God. I believe that He gave His life freely so that my life could be free. That He died on a cross. That He was buried in a tomb. And three days later, he rose from the dead. And when he did, it was with my forgiveness, it was with my new life, and it was with the fruit of the Spirit by the Holy Spirit to change me. So I ask you now, Jesus, forgive me of my sins. I invite you into my heart. I call you Lord and Savior. From this day forward, I will never, ever be the same. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, thank you for being with us today. 
those of you who had made that decision just now, We're so proud of you, and we want to continue to journey with you. We don't want you to not know what your next steps are. We want to help you make your next steps. If you'll text the phrase on your device, grab a device, and text the phrase to us, Summit Saved at 94000. Summit Saved 94000. We have people standing by right now ready to interact with you, answer any questions you have. We also have some information we'd love to get into your hands. It's been a joy to be able to speak today. It's been a joy to bring this message about the Holy Spirit to your life, to your home, to your family. God bless you. We're going to be seeing you really soon. Get excited. June 28th, Dad's Day next week. We give a shout out to all of the grads, the 2020 grads today. We love you so much. Stephanie and I are so looking forward to gathering back together in in in-person meetings. And until then, just know that we're praying for you and we love you. We'll see you really, really soon. Thanks for joining us on Summit TV. Your generosity is so appreciated during this time. Your giving is what allows us to move forward at Summit and also make a difference in our local, national, and international missions. If you'd like to give to Summit Church, click the Give link in our live stream description box. Starting Point meets this afternoon, and parents, more content for your family is available today.